I think that what we're looking for is the ability to respond to one's own internal barometers of breath and heartbeat, really going back to our life rhythms, to finding out what the truth of the body is before the mind gets to be engaged, before even a desire for a response gets to be engaged. So what is going on now in me, in what I call the plant world, which is the autonomic nervous system inside ourselves. It's like a plant. It has no consciousness of past or future. It just lives in the present. It responds to weather. And our body weather determines how fast our breath is, how fast our heartbeat is, and what our feelings and reflexes are doing, which result in sound making, emotional sound making, and um, language. So the words attach meaning to things, but it's the work that I do is really pre-verbal in large part. We move into, with my restructuring work, that's the destructuring work, we move into the restructuring work which is about language, managing language and therefore managing the way the voice is produced to make meaningful language, to to phrase or to sing a melodic line in a song. So that is part of it too. But I love the very, very beginning part where you are feeling your own vibration, your own rhythms, your own sound. the main problem is the way um, societies socialize their children. That children are required to be certain ways and to do certain things, which is not necessarily their desire or, the, or their nature to do. And so in resisting the intuitive or spontaneous impulse, the central nervous system gives um, literally physical blocks by muscle tension so that these impulses cannot be expressed. And to find your way back to that can take years, it can take a lifetime to find your way back to where impulse is uh, not only allowed but can be followed on in a graceful, flowing, productive way, which is what I'm trying to achieve with the voice. bring awareness to the vibratory quality of the body, the rhythmic quality of the breath in its ever-changing ways, and to a lesser extent the heartbeat, because that's part of our life rhythm, and then to the impulse to make sound and to feel that vibration, not listen to it, but to really feel it as a, as a sensation in the body. And from there, from that awareness, we can make choices. Well, it can, you know, like anything, it can be overdone, right? Like anything. Um, but it does, it does need to become aware, because otherwise it's not reliable. When you're nervous again, and the nervousness takes over, uh, you've got no tools to move through that, or to allow the charge of the nervousness to actually assist you in your project of whatever the speaking is whether it's a, a role in a play or whether it's a presentation or whatever. So you're not able to move beyond 
whatever reflexive behavior might be going on and then one tries to control it instead of going with it and using that charge. So, yes, but what we are doing is going back to a way that the body behaved when it first learned language, the way children uh, reach out and call to each other, the way the baby calls to its mother. It's using the muscles which I teach as technique. So it is technique in a way, but it's also getting back to a natural way of organizing, um, organizing muscles, uh, breath flow, so that meaningful sound can happen, not just random, what I call fluffy sound. But that's a good place to start. Well, meaning arises when one needs to communicate because one can make all kinds of joyful, sad, angry sounds. But if I want to communicate what my feeling is about, how you might help me resolve those feelings of need or want or food or I'm expressing anger because I want to change something. So, um, the need to communicate creates meaning and gives me an intention to get a result from you, from my sound making. Because I could go into the woods alone and be very happy making a lot of sound and I wouldn't necessarily be communicating with another human being. So what I'm calling the focus line is a way to develop awareness of connection because language implies I want you to understand me and I want you to understand my wants, my needs, my feelings, and I want a response. So it's both of those things. So listening is a large part of what I do, as well as the actual sound making and the speaking of meaning. Yeah, so it's basically, it's a really about communication. For me, I'm having yes. this parallel now, when you just make music and improvise with people and you come together in a jam session, which for me, there was always something it's nice to dive into the, yes. the primal communication, but then also always I, I felt like for me there was something missing. It's like, yeah. where is it going? Yes. For whom is it? What's actually communicated? It's yeah. just the, the uh, conscious uh, uh, intent yes. was not there. It, then it just happens and then there's the, it's in dancing and then it's in over. the happening. Yes, and it's over. Yeah, exactly. The happening is then over and you're not left with any form, yeah. a thing. Yeah. So. So, yeah, it's, it's interesting what you're saying. It's very like a jam session, and I love jam sessions. They're, they're great. Um, but it's nice to be able to repeat music, and it's nice to be able to repeat a role, and it's nice to be able to rely on someone understanding language. So those things require consciousness. So they're not just the primary impulse. They require my consciousness to deliver meaning and to deliver intent and to request response. question goes in, into the future, would you see, is there an unknown yet undiscovered potential of the voice which we haven't fathomed or the possibilities? Because I think you know the potential of the voice. I, I, yes, it's a very interesting question and it centers the word which pops into mind as you speak is truth. And politically we are so outside of that realm right now in the United States. Truth is not an option, it seems. And I am very interested in being able to tell, from every person being able to tell their own truth, working from their own truth, and bringing that kind of insight which contains empathy and tolerance and, and difference and, and communication of all kinds. It contains that if you're living in your own truth. When you're not living in your own truth, the world is skewed up and it doesn't matter how much harm you do to others. So many 
people are aiming for something which I think you can call spiritual but not religious. Mm. So that it's, um, we're looking for the oneness and uh, our similarities and acknowledging our differences and um, helping each other. I, I, I feel very strongly about these things. It sounds like um, it has nothing to do with vocal production, but I think it has everything to do with vocal production. And I think the more you live and work for finding your own truth in the body, the own, your own uh, ability to both experience, understand, become aware of and work from and with your own um, reflexes and uh, truth, that we're helping, we're helping other people with that. We're helping other people discover that. Beautiful. Too. Basically coming, coming really back to the essence of what it means to be human. That's right. And, and yes. the role of, of communication. That's exactly right. So it's not just one human, me alone or you alone. It's what is this interaction? And that's what voice is about. I vibrate my body so that I resonate, you hear it so your body is vibrating and we are in sympathetic vibrations together immediately and that can travel very far. therapeutic uh, uh, dimension of the well, voice Well, that, that's very um, important to me because not only are we trying to create something interesting and beautiful and various and creative, but to do it in the most healthy way possible. And in finding the vocal health, we are also talking about our human health. And we're not only modeling it, we're offering it, mm. almost demanding it of other people. The work itself um, can make things apparently a little worse before they get better because if you're taking away somebody's habits of control and uh, organization, um, you're taking that away, you're taking off the lid sometimes and stuff can bubble up and, and we've learned to deal with that in the most uh, useful way that we can. It's not always possible, but people self-select, you know. If they want to go as deep as we are asking, we can, and if they don't want to, they won't come back. So that's fine too. So everybody will pick their own way of developing their own humanity. So a healing process is almost an inherent part of it, this co uh, coming to the core of your experience. It's absolutely part of it, because you're creating within the, the auric egg, which is your body, you're creating harmony. Mm. So that is really on a macro vibratory level and also on a micro vibratory level, on the auric energetic level. You're doing the same thing and becoming vibration which is harmonious and not, um, not earth-shakingly ugly or negative towards other people or yourself. Just observe the breathing. And are you holding it? Are you forcing it? Are you doing it too little? See if you can allow your breathing to be free so that you can respond to what's around you and to your own experience. It starts with breathing. And it's a rhythm, so it's an oscillation, so in a way it's a kind of vibration. It starts with breathing. Yes. It's our first independent action when we come out of the womb, right? And it's what stops when our life stops. <laughs> <laughs>